Hopefully get connected here to Facebook. <clears throat> it's building an audience. It was pretty cool yesterday. Um, I actually was watching Jack Hibbs on Facebook Live. He was on there for like about an hour. <clears throat> Amazing how many people were, were watching and <clears throat> he was answering questions. So good stuff on there. <clears throat> Hopefully we don't get uh, disconnected. Good morning, Facebook. I see there's one. One person on the line right now. Oh, now two, good morning. <clears throat> if you want to grab your Bibles, we'll be in the book of Philemon or Philemon. Whichever way you pronounce it, Philemon, Philemon. <coughs> Philemon in Spanish. Last time we were talking in Spanish on Facebook Live, someone... <laughs> Got on and said, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> like, no. So they, so they left. They left. Like, I'm sorry. Shouldn't be playing like that, I guess. So, Philemon, Philemon, whichever you choose. Good morning. Welcome those of you on Facebook. Appreciate you joining us as we go through the Bibles through the Bible on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. California time. <clears throat> we pray that uh, you're blessed and the Lord will continue to bless you as we teach on his word. So let's go ahead and, and pray. Thank all of you guys for coming to, uh, today too. It's raining here in California. It's like pouring rain right now, which we definitely need. <clears throat> let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you, Father, for the rain that you have brought us here in California, Father, at least in this part of California, Father. It's so refreshing, Lord. <clears throat> Pray you'd continue to, to bring it, Lord, from time to time. Lord God, we just thank you for your grace and your mercies, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you, Father, for, for just our lives, Lord, and what you have given to us, Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessings of life itself. As we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, this coming uh, week or so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would just, uh, just instill in our hearts, Lord, the true meaning of Christmas, Father, that it is about Jesus, Lord, and what he has done for us on the cross. His birth was a miracle, Lord, spectacular, like no other birth has ever taken place in all of this earth, Lord, and it changed the world, Lord turned it right side up, Lord. And we just thank you for the reminder every year, though we really don't know the exact date of his birth, Lord. We know that it's not around this time, but we celebrate it at this time just as a reminder, Lord. <clears throat> I pray, Lord, that, um, that it would just be special in our hearts, especially those that are all his children. We pray, Lord, that you minister to us now in Jesus' name. <clears throat> okay, Philemon. I love the book of Philemon. It's another favorite book of mine, uh, maybe because it's so short. It's got 25 verses, and so it's, uh, it's easy to go through, and, and you can actually say, I read a whole book of the Bible, you know, <laughs> that quick. <clears throat> but it deals with uh, an individual who was a slave to Philemon, and he turned, it, turned out to be a bad slave in that he stole from his master. And so <clears throat> he encounters Paul, the apostle, while he's in prison there in Rome. And Paul was able to minister to him. And he became a Christian. And then Paul writes Philemon this personal letter. And this is a personal letter to, to Philemon, another, another letter to an individual and not necessarily to a church. And so this is a personal letter in the sense that uh, Paul wrote it to him, and we actually get to read someone's letter that was sent to them, so kind of interesting. But he encourages uh, Philemon to, to be um, forgiving, uh, to let it go, and that if he owes him anything, he'll, he'll take care of it himself. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and read verse 1. Is his normal introduction, Paul, 
a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother. Uh, the theme, if you had a theme, it would be forgiveness from slavery. Uh, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer. So a couple of things uh, here that we notice is that Philemon was a friend, but he was also a fellow laborer in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They worked together, and yet they had a, a, a friendship. Uh, to the beloved uh, Phia, who was the wife of Philemon, uh, Archippus, um, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Now, they met in houses back then, uh, not necessarily synagogues. The church was growing. People would open up their house, like, Phile like um, Philemon here, who was probably a, a wealthy man, opened up his house because he became a Christian and wanted to be used by God, as we saw on Wednesday, having those good works. And so his hope is that people would come in, hear the gospel message, get saved, and that the church continued to, to grow. And that's the heart of any individual that gets moved by God and the Holy Spirit to see people saved, see people come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I know when I first got saved, that was one of the priorities uh, in my life was to spread the gospel news. And I remember just seeing my mom there. I remember on a Saturday morning, I just wanted to make sure my mom was saved. And, and so from Redlands, I drove all the way out to Roland Heights, which is about 45 to 50 minutes. And I woke her up. She was still asleep. I went really early. And I said, Mom, you need Jesus Christ. And she's just kind of waking up. What? Well, you need Jesus Christ in your life. She goes, I know Jesus Christ. I go, no, you really need to confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart. You know, and so she did the sinner's prayer right there. I mean, I was just so zealous to, to get the gospel out. And that's Philemon. He wanted to open up his house. And he said, come on in and, and, and hear the gospel message. Uh, God has changed me, and I know that he can change you also. Paul goes on and says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and your faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective. Um, and that word effective there, basically is like uh, 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 if you can think of a mill uh, working with wood and how the, the wood's getting chopped and sawed and just constantly working in the mill. Just there's no stopping. It's just moving always. And that's what he's saying. It's working and it's working in order and it's continually working. And so may your faith be effective, continually working in order by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Jesus, for we have great joy and consolation of your love because of the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brethren. Uh, observation there, we see that Philemon was a blessing to others. And Paul recognized that and applauded him for being faithful and reaching out to the less fortunate or those that don't know Jesus Christ and opening up his house because his love uh, for the brethren, his love for humanity. Uh, those are attributes that, that we all should be seeking from the Lord. Corinthians chapter 13 gives us the love chapter. He tells us what love is. You know, love is patient, love is kind, love is not rude. And he, he lists all these things. And, and these are things that we are to aspire to. Hopefully in our prayer, we're asking God to help us to love, help us to, to um, not be rude, help us to be patient in those things. This was Philemon. He loved the brethren, and he was willing to open up his house and serve them in, in any way that he possibly could. Now we come to what, what you would call the, the, the center of the sandwich, right? This is one of those sandwich messages where you where you butter up everybody, you know, and then you get to the meat of the, of the message or your letter, and then you butter them up at the, at the end. And not that you, you're being, um, you know, two-faced or hypocritical, but you, you know, you're, you're bringing out the good qualities, and, and you're trying to encourage them, but yet you also want to instruct them in some things too. 
So he says, therefore, though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting. I love that about Paul. You know, I could actually command you as to what is fitting, but I really don't want to. I want to appeal to, to the love that I know you have. But I could if, if I needed to. Yet for love's sake, I rather appeal to you being such a one as Paul, the aged, possibly he's in his 60s, at this time, while he was in Rome, you can read about it in Acts chapter 28, verse, verse 30. Um, the time itself was right around 80, 60, 61. So he's an older guy there in prison in Rome. Uh, he's aged. He's got some wisdom. Um, so he's appealing to him. And now a prisoner of Jesus Christ, he says, verse 10, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus. Now, Onesimus... Um, means profitable. He knew how to, to work. Uh, he was able to become a benefit to others. Later on, historically, they say that he was a bishop uh, <clears throat> of some sort because God had touched his life so greatly that he ended up serving the Lord. Once profitable... Or once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. Um, here's a, an individual who was a slave. I'm not sure what slavery was like back then. I don't think it was like what we saw in our country. Uh, I think it was more like an employer-employee type of relationship. Though I'm sure that there was some abuse, just like in anything. Uh, wasn't really what you wanted to do, but it was your lot in life. <clears throat> Poor. Saw a rich master, thought I could take whatever I wanted to and, and just leave, run away, and hopefully find a better life, buy myself a better life, I guess. But then he runs into to Paul, and Paul shares the gospel with him, and his life changes. And that's what the gospel does. It changes you. Uh, there's an evidence that is so clear of your salvation The Bible is really clear that when we come to know Jesus Christ, that we become born again. We become new creatures in Christ Jesus. So many believe today that just because I believe in God, I have to be a Christian. And that is not true. Just because you believe in God doesn't make you a Christian. You have to believe in God. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. You have to believe in the Holy Spirit. Well, I believe all those, yeah. But you have to now surrender your life to them. That's what believing means. The word belief actually means trusting and surrendering your life to them. You can't be in control of your life. You just can't. People are always calling and asking and, and requesting prayer from me and for help. And then I'll encourage them, well, where are you at with Jesus? Well, I believe in God. That's not an issue. I go, well, where are you with Jesus, though? How's your walk? Well, I'm in still, you know, struggling, and I'm not going to church, and I'm not participating. Well, where's, then where's your walk? Because the Bible says in James, the devils believe, but they fear and they tremble. They actually seen God face to face, know what he looks like, and they believe in him. They, they've seen him, so there's no doubt in their mind that God does not exist, and yet they've made the choice not to serve him. They fear and they tremble because they know they'll be judged one day. Now, I say this <clears throat> cautiously, lovingly, because I don't know man's heart, but I know the power of the Holy Spirit and how when God does come into your life, he changes you. You should become a new creature in Christ Jesus. I was just talking with a gentleman on Wednesday night, and um, he was sharing with me how his life has been changing. But he hasn't really noticed it. What he's hearing is those comments from others around him where, where they're saying, you're different. Why are you different? He said, I am? He goes, yeah, you're, you, you seem different. Something's changing. It's actually pretty good. You know? and, and those are the things that are evidence to those around you is that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and you've changed. And that's why Onesimus went from being unprofitable to profitable, right? If you're unprofitable and you say, well, I believe in God, but you're still unprofitable, you're still stealing, you're still lying, you're still cheating, you're still doing all these things, 
And you say you know God? No, that doesn't sound like you know God. You become profitable where now you no longer steal, you no longer cheat, you no longer lie, because you know those things are wrong, and they, not that they don't, not that they keep you away from God or heaven, but you know that they hurt God. And it's not what a person does when they're trying to walk the right path and do the right thing. And that's what changes, is really a desire to do the right thing in a person's life. So he became profitable uh, to Paul. <clears throat> so in verse 12 he says, I'm sending him back to you. Therefore receive him, that is my own heart, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. So Paul was going to send him back as though it was his own heart. He, he loved the guy. The guy ministered to him. Again, he's being profitable, but he wants to send him back to make things right. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing that your good deed might not be com by compulsion, as it were, but voluntarily. For perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose that you might receive him forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Paul is basically saying, forgive him, forgive him. I'm going to send him back as though my own heart's coming back to you. And I'm hoping that that love that you had for the church and opening your house and caring will also extend to Onesimus who took from you something that was valuable. And I, and I hope that you're willing to overlook and forgive those things and don't treat him as a slave. He could probably go to prison because of what he's done by stealing and so forth. But don't treat him as a slave. Treat him as a brother in the Lord, as you would receive me as your own. You know, forgiveness, <clears throat> especially during the holiday seasons, can be uh, so trying on some of us that have not forgiven. We really need to forgive people. We need to make things right with one another. Yeah, but the person won't allow me to ask for forgiveness or they won't ask for forgiveness. That's okay. You still need to forgive them yourself, even if they don't receive it. Or, or you don't have the opportunity to share that with them, in your heart you need to give it to the Lord and you need to forgive them. How can we, how can we offer up our services and our gifts unto the Lord if we have a struggle with our brother? The Bible tells us to first get that right and then bring your offerings to God. We need to forgive people. How do we, how do, we do that? How do we forgive people? And oftentimes it's through prayer and it's through through saying it with your mouth and believing in your heart that, that God is going to forgive and change your attitude towards others. Um, to be able to disagree agreeably like we saw on Wednesday night in relationships. You know, to be able to say, I don't agree with you, but I still love you. It's okay that I don't agree with you. Um, it's not a big deal. It's not going to affect me. It's not going to affect the way I walk, the way I live, my livelihood. You know, you want to believe that? That's fine. This is what I believe, but I still love you. I don't want to let it be a, a wedge between us because I'm more, um, <clears throat> more concerned about our relationship than with whether I'm right or whether with I'm wrong. And, and when we forgive one another, that's how we view that situation. We can't live in bitterness. And, and Paul was hoping that Philemon would be able to say, he's my brother now. He's not just a slave. He's a born-again believer, and we both have an inheritance in heaven together. So in verse 17, he says, If then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. I love that, how Paul does that. I mean, he, he loves him so much that he's willing to say, Look, Philemon, it's like receiving me. You know, I know you love me, and I know how much you love me. And so, I mean, think about it this way, Philemon. I mean, it's, it's like if I was coming to your house, and how you would receive me and bring out the goods and so forth and wash my feet and do all those things that you would do for me. I'm asking you to do that for him. I do that for him. Uh, I think of Moses in the Old Testament and how he loved the people of God, and he considered him um, his people. When we are willing to place ourselves in someone else's shoes, 
so that they get a benefit from it is godly and is Christian. Jesus himself even said, forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they're doing. And Jesus took our place. He took our place upon that cross. So receive him as you would me. But if he has wronged you or owes you anything, put it on my account. So not only receive him, but if there's anything that he owes you, I'll pay for it. I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay, not to mention to you that you owe me even yourselves or your own selves besides. So Paul then just reminds them. <clears throat> hey, look, I'll pay for it. But don't forget that I was instrumental in your salvation. And that I was used as an instrument to lead you to the Lord. And what a blessing that is that you have salvation, eternal life, and all heaven's glory more than you could ever imagine. And so I'm willing to pay for it, but also remember, be, be forgiving, be compassionate in your decision here. <clears throat> is it wrong to think that way? I think we think that way sometimes, don't we? When, when there's a, a thorn in a relationship, we think, man, all that I've given them have you ever thought that way? And I've given them a lot. I poured into that relationship, you know. And this is how they treat me. This is how they, they, they pay me back. And we think like that. I don't think that's what Paul was saying. I think Paul was trying to stir up in him to be more generous than necessarily be, feel convicted or guilty that, oh, man, Paul did kind of lead me to the Lord. I am grateful for that and so forth. But, you know. Not to feel guilty, but to realize that, man, God's been gracious to me through someone else. I can be gracious to someone else, just like Paul was gracious to me. And I think that's what he was shooting for. So, on my account, I, I uh, verse 20. Yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. But meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. Uh, Aphrodite, my fellow prisoner in Christ, Jesus greets you, as do Mark, uh, Archicus, Dem Demas, Luke, and fellow laborers. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. You notice Mark is mentioned there. When Paul speaks to Philemon, he, he speaks from experience. If you were to read the book of Acts, <clears throat> and you find the, the area where Paul and Barnabas and Mark went on a mission trip, and when they got back, Paul was very upset about how Mark was not really doing much. He wasn't helping. He was young, but Paul felt like he should have been a little more mature, should have been a little more helpful. And... and Barnabas was defending Mark, saying, well, he's young. You know, he's not there yet. Give him some grace. You know, give him some mercy. And Paul says, no, I, I don't have time for that. You know, he should have done this and that. And so there was, the Bible says there was contention between them. And, and so Paul split from, from Barnabas and, and Mark there. But now we see Mark's name as, you know, he, he lists them here as, as fellow prisoners, as fellow laborers. And so... Mark has become a benefit, and he, he does tell us in another letter that, um, that Mark has been a benefit to me. And so Mark grew up, he grew up, he learned, he matured, and Paul was willing to forgive and then to become a fellow laborer with him. So I think through, through his experience, he was able to minister to Philemon too about Onesimus. That this can be a great thing. Though he stole from you, and you may be angry and upset about it, but now he's saved. And he's a changed person, and he's probably going to repay you more than even what he took, I'm sure. And, and this can be a good thing for the glory of God. God can use it for his benefit and in the kingdom. And imagine how many people that struggle with forgiveness of their slaves and struggle with uh, receiving one another in love and carrying each other's burdens, as the Bible says. How many people will benefit from this action displayed by both of you, you know, in the kingdom of God? And so there's something to be said about forgiving one another, letting things go, and then moving on in that relationship. And I'm not saying that you have to 
as J. Vernon McGee would say, sit down and have chicken with them every night. You know, you don't have to do that. But at least you can continue to be acquaintances and, and loyal to one another. So it's a good little book. There's so much in it. There's much more than I'd like to talk about. But that concludes our, our devotion. So thank you, Facebook, for joining us. Appreciate uh, your time and those that will be listening to this uh, throughout the day. A lot of family members that are visiting from El Paso, uh, Dallas, uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, blessed to have you guys uh, view this every once in a while. I pray your weekend is a, a blessed weekend. Don't forget to go to church on Sunday and prepare your hearts for, for this uh, a week from this Sunday for Christmas. Real important date. Uh, continue to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there is someone in your life that you need to forgive, Take it to the Lord and just forgive them. We love you guys, and we pray that God just continue to bless you. And we'll see you Monday morning as we start the book of Hebrews. God bless.